So, welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO at DVS, and I'm gonna take you through today's Tech Tuesday. Today, we're gonna to take a look at specifically the IDS-9632NXI-IA forward slash 16S. Um, B, the second generation false alarm recorder. So the second generation false alarm recorder is really, really starting to take off, reducing false alarms. We do it in a 7.7 series and a 9,000 series, but it's really, really starting to help those who are getting a massive amount of false alarms on their site, reducing them by use of analytic uh, analysis on the recorder via GPU. So we'll take a quick look at the setup. We're gonna take a look at doing it through web browser, because if I set it up, that's how I do it through web browser. And if I'm supporting you guys on site or my team are, you're gonna do, do it via team viewer, which means we're gonna do it via the web browser. So it's easier for us if we show you that way. I will show you quickly the local GUI, but um, again, don't forget to like and then subscribe of any on our social media platforms, so uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, any everything else, Grinder if you're Jake. Um, keep looking out for those social media platforms, follow us, like us, comment, keep all the love coming in, we really, really appreciate it. We'll do some competitions, we're just lining up some great giveaways from our partners, which we're gonna do, so it's been a while since we've done a, a giveaway, so we'll do that very, very shortly. One thing I do wanna show you before we move on, not like I don't like the sound of my own voice or anything, I haven't got a big ego to massage, but is this product here. So this product here, is a uh, bullet camera, believe it or not, hey, I hear you say, with a built-in flashing light and speaker. We do it with a turret as well, so I've been testing it for the last couple of weeks. This product, I think, really is set to take uh, center stage in the latest product release. So bullet and turret, built-in speaker, so by way of anal analyzing like a line cross or intrusion zone with better analytics and a standard two line, because it's part of the easy IP4 range. Um, we can then trigger one of 10 pre-recorded messages and flash the light. So it's absolutely fantastic that warning um, would be intruders away. So I'm gonna walk in front of it now to trigger it. So there we go, so I've triggered it. Danger, please keep away. Danger, please keep away. Right, I'm gonna go and turn that off. I think your minds are working overtime. You thinking of as many applications as I am. I've shown it to quite a few people that they're getting very, very excited about this technology. I'm sure you are now. By the time you watch this, you probably even got them released. So, buckle up, hold on tight, and get ready for the ride of the False Alarm NVR. See you in two ticks. Cheers, guys. Okay, so we're here, people. We're gonna take a look at the uh, web browser setup, because if we're gonna team view in and support you, we're gonna be doing it via team viewer and via web browser. You can do it on the local uh, GUI, and um, I'll show you quickly through the video camera how we can do it on the local GUI. But today, we're gonna show you the setup and how to use the special version of IMS 4200 to look for any false alarms so you can keep an eye on things. So one thing to note is we do actually have a setup guide here. So if I scroll down now, it tells you on things to be courses about, uh, setup, what the options in the menu mean, how to go about searching for false alarms on the NVR GUI and the 4200, um, different set of parameters, what the actual um, uh, sub menus mean and do, uh, suggested setup guides, target distances, etc. So you can see if you do need this, then uh, let us know and we'll ping this across to you. It's worth noting that on the 9632NXI 16SB version, it'll support up to 16 cameras at two megapixel. So we'll just scroll through so you can have a look. Some of you might screenshot this. Um, some of you may not. You can see there if you scroll through, NVR can analyze up to 16 channel 1080p, 8 channel 4, 4, blah, 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 And there's the connotations as well as the setup guide. So we've been through enough of that. Let me open up the web browser. Um, you can see our YouTube channel playing on the monitor behind me. Make sure you subscribe. I can't uh, say enough how much we need to do that. So we'll get Jake to put a link up um, for the uh, manual as well if you really want. So there's a special version of IMS 4200 and a link for the PDF for the setup guide. If you want Jake to put that link up, all shout now. Jake. Yeah, that'll do. So Jake. Put the link up, bro. Okay, so go into configuration. First thing you want to look at is, although the, the, this is the second generation, it's the B uh, indicate second generation, so there's more 
um, analysis goes on within this unit, it is worth noting that if you've got the non-B version, which is the first generation, the setup is exactly the same. The B version is just um, more thorough in its process, let's say. Okay, so you can see the model number there. We're on our latest firmware as today. Uh, always check the firmware version, especially on these higher end IDS models. Always worth checking that because you know that, that will keep the engine up to date. Um, as of today, that's new, but we must always check. Okay, the rest of it, I'm not gonna go through the specific settings uh, for the standard NVR. We're gonna go straight into the smart setup. So what you'll see is under maintenance, there's a new option, and this is on the non-B version as well, called filter alarm statistic. I was trying to say that with a mouthful. Basically, we can tick the channels. So I've ticked all of them. Um, all the ones I enabled the uh, filtered alarm statistics on. So basically, it says email is a report type or none, but we're going to do an email type every day, or you could put every seven days. So every seven days, you'll get an email. In fact, we'll change that to every seven days for me because I get one every day. It'd be nice to get one every seven days moving forward. But it tells us the what camera is set up. Um, and what the detection is set up. So human and vehicle, human and vehicle, body, body, brand, or none. So this is the smart analysis. So you need to set the email up first for this to work, obviously, but it will go to the registered email address. Uh, it is handy, I'll show you that part after. That's the first thing we've added into this uh, menu. The rest of it is security and stuff. We've already done all that. VCA configuration is telling us um, we've got 12 cameras linked and all of that is standard. So on the face value, the setup looks very similar to any other recorder out there, which is fantastic. The menu structure stays the same. What you will notice is when you go to event and smart event, when it loads, you have to bear with it. Uh, Internet Explorer is not the fastest, bless it, but still my favorite. Okay, so what we will do is pick up, say, this camera here. Camera 2 is an external camera. So I've enabled local smart analysis. What that does is it, the NVR now is doing the false alarm checking on there. So every alarm that activates through intrusion, line cross, region exit, region, e region entrance, region exit, the NVR will look at this picture and say, is there a human or a vehicle that's activated that? If there is, do the linkage action. If there's not, disregard it. So it's a very, very good process for especially external alarms. If you're getting a lot of false alarms on sites um, with the standard analytics, this will definitely enhance it and reduce that very significantly. Um, so what we'll do is show you the quick setup. For this camera, say intrusion or line cross, it doesn't really matter. Once you've enabled local smart analysis, you can actually run both analytics at the same time you know any of these you can run at the same time um, but again don't forget it will depend on the resolution of the camera as to how many your unit will support there is another way I'll show you uh, the second non preferred way but it still still does some checking so enable lo local smart analysis is enabled we've enabled intrusion detection so here's our box there so it's as simple as this so by default if I just clear it so there's nothing shown. Let's just go right back to the start. Okay, back to the start we go. So if I want to set an analytic up, whether it's intrusion or line crossing, I first of all enable local smart analysis. This will tell me that supported smart events will now be changed when enabling, disabling, continue. Of course I want to continue. Next thing you do is you notice the banner changes up here because when you enable the smart analysis on the NVR, it's limited to what we can support because the NVR is doing the, um, the actual analysis of it. We can only actually do uh, one intrusion area, one line cross, one region entrance and, and say one region exit. Whereas the camera may be a five or a seven line camera and support more internally to itself. On the NVR, we're just looking at it as a whole. So if you've got an area that you want, you treat this as an area rather than smaller individual areas. And yes, before anyone asks, you can support um, like two line cameras. It's not specific to two, four, four five, or seven or even eight line. Um, I've even got it working on a PTZ. It only works on the park preset when it's static and stationary. It doesn't work when you're moving it and panning it around. But it doesn't, what I would say is, 
if you're using it externally to reduce any problems with infrared rain um, image issues, I would probably either go for a bullet camera or a dome with a segregated IR like the 4D uh, dark fire um, camera, the 4 line or the 5 series dome with a segregated IR um, just to give you that enhanced um, issue. You can get a much better image full stop and it will help with the analytic. So back to the intrusion detection, we'll enable that and we want to detect for human and vehicles. It's obvious both of, the, both of these will come through this scene. I would probably say to be safe, always enable both, but it is very dependent on your application. If human or vehicle is desired, just select the appropriate one. So what we're going to do is draw our area and I want to monitor pretty much the whole car park from here. Uh, so we'll go there and we'll just draw this here. And we'll just drop that down there so you can have funny shapes to go around if you like. We'll save that. Threshold is two seconds, so the threshold is the time that an object is validated by the sensitivity and is in this area. So if you increase that to 10, the object, a vehicle or human, would have to be in this area for 10 seconds or more before the linkage act action occurred. So it's a way of making it not so much loitering, but it would enhance your false alarm checking. It would stop a bird or cat or dog, um, not that they're a human or a vehicle, but it does definitely, or sunlight reflections, it does definitely enhance that um, false alarm checking. There we go, there's Tim, our MD, he's being picked up as a human and he's triggered the intrusion box. He's gone red, he's off somewhere to use the phone. So what we'll say is, we'll put it back to two because I like it as two seconds. The sensitivity, contrary to the b belief, and you can actually find it in the help. Yes, we do have a help menu. By clicking help, it will tell you everything you need to know about the product, believe it or not. As if, if, as if it was magic. So the sensitivity here, you can see the, sen the value of the sensitivity defines the size of the object which can trigger the alarm. When the sensitivity, sensitivity is high, a very small object can trigger the alarm. Now, depending on some devices, the sensitivity will dictate if it's the size of the object, as in it has to be more of the object. The higher the sensitivity, the lower the sensitivity, if that makes sense, because the whole object has to cross in. Whereas we're using it, the higher the sensitivity, uh, the better it performs, uh, essentially. But just check on that. So we've drawn our area, and we've drawn our thresholds and sensitivity. The default is 50, I suggest you start there. And you can only have one area. Arming schedule is 24 seven, or you fit it to your site, or use one key disarming. And the linkage action would be audible, send email, notify surveillance or full screen monitoring. If it's a monitor system, you're going to do send email, audible warning and notify surveillance center probably. Um, but we'll just disable those for a minute. You can also trigger PTZ presets. If you want the analytic to trigger a preset, you choose the PTZ and the preset applicable to it. And it's as simple as that. You can do maximum and minimum object size. What I say to most customers, first of all, start with the basics. See how accurate or how reliable it's performing for you. If you feel it still needs a little bit more um, false alarm checking, you can draw the maximum and minimum object size. So what we'd say is in this scene here, so the maximum size object, maximum and minimum size object would be, say, a, this a car here. So a car coming about that big through the scene would save so nothing bigger than this would trigger it and the minimum size so would be something smaller than Tim there because obviously you want it to trigger if Tim walked in there so click apply so that means between these two sizes would um, if it's smaller than that box it wouldn't trigger and if it's larger than that box it wouldn't trigger it by nature so you can do some further enhancement to this if you prefer I do tell most people to not do it by default, see how you're getting on. If you need that added step, then then use it. But it is entirely up to you. I'm just gonna clear that, draw my area again. And we'll just draw it like a complete square this time. There we go, and save that. And I'm happy that that's completed and I've set all my linkage actions. Same with line crossing, exactly the same principle. Wait for it to load. So I can draw my line anywhere I want, move that, save it, sensitivity, maximum minimum object size, etc. And then I can say enable line crossing, human, and a vehicle, save, arm and schedule 24 seven, linkage action as appropriate. So you can have multiples of these enabled at the same time. 
um, if you want region entrance and region exit, etc. Wait for it to catch up. Let's have a bit of Kong Strong while we're waiting. The perfect drink for those people who really need that boost of energy. I probably won't get paid for that. Okay, so again, we can do the same with region entrance and region exit. If you need them, and it's also got scene change detection. I really have been working on my uh, vocabulary and face detection if you need it. So I can enable both of these, save, all the face detection will do is uh, capture people's faces and you can actually not search like facial recognition, but it'll show you all the captured faces. Pretty standard analytic. We've had that for a long time. Okay, so again, we can do that for any of the cameras. So if I pick another camera, so an 8 megapixel camera, except for instance, if we look at this one, wait for it to catch up. There's some coal in it. Plenty of that in Wales. So this is an eight megapixel. And again, it's just anyone that comes in in that area or crosses that line there and you can see the object detection working nicely there. What you can also do is, this is doing it on the NVR, but if I look at a 12 megapixel camera, for instance, this one here isn't being monitored for the false alarm analysis via the NVR. But I have enabled intrusion detection, drawn a box, same test, human and vehicle, set the percentages, arm and schedule and linkage action. What it'll do is by default, you can't see on here on the NVR, there's a save VA tick box, which is on by default when you enable an analytic. The NVR camera will send an image to the NVR as, a, as an object crosses into this area. The NVR will receive the VCA image and check it against um, the database to check if it's valid or not. What it will do then is drop it or linkage action it, depending on what, what, what it was seen. What I would say is whilst you can do that, it's not as accurate as using the NVR to obviously using the recorder to start the, the IP camera to initially uh, make that contact and send the alarm and NVR is receiving sort of second hand data if you like and then ju judging it based on that. It seems to work okay. Um, the preferred method is obviously that by the NVR, but it's an additional method. If you're really, really stuck, you can do it that way and it will give you sort of an enhanced layer of standard analytic. So hope that makes complete sense. But you can see there, when it's on standard analytic, these are the ones directly from the camera and what that supports. And as you can see there, there's four in that camera because that's what the camera is letting the camera do the work. Alternatively, we do this technology in a seven line camera. So if you don't want the expense of an NVR, we do it in a seven, seven series NVR, a 9000 NVR. You could ultimately have this also in a seven line bullet camera or dome camera externally. And the analysis done, is done on the camera and then forwarded to the NVR, standard NVR, to receive the alarm post analysis. So I hope that makes complete sense. Other than that, the NVR is a very, very um, straightforward recorder in, in, in the fact that there's no additional setting past that. We try to make it as simple as possible. So as you look through it, it absolutely makes sense to everybody because you're very used to it. Uh, vehicle detection, VCA. Now the VCA and human body capture will only be supported on a camera that's got the VCA technology like an IDS camera or a human body capture camera. Luckily I have got a human body capture camera, if I say that with a mouthful, um, which is that one there. So that's doing human um, body capture. Uh, well, if I click on human body capture, well, I was in the, the VCA menu. But if I look at this one here, so it does support the human body capture. What this does is a, like a big uh, Robocop head. When it detects movement in this scene, scans around, zooms in with a PTZ and takes a snapshot of that person. Uh, very, very separate um, technology, but we have, we have got that if you need it. So that's pretty much the NVR. If you go to playback, again, the same. For false alarm checking, you either do it on the NVR local GUI or you do this on the IVMS 4200. If I select the camera for playback, you can see that it gives me no option for the false alarm check-in. If I press play, 
This is from midnight last night. You'll see there's no option there to even do false alarm checking. So currently it's not available on the web interface. It's something that they will hopefully look at and we fed it back. So we'll move on quickly to the IMS 4200. Hopefully you follow me and keep it up and you shall see me in two seconds when I load the 4200 up. Okay, welcome back. First thing to note, like I said, currently it's on a special version of IMS 4200. That version there is the latest version that supports the false alarm checking. So please check you've got the correct version before you spend hours and hours and realize you don't have that function. Again, shout Jake loud enough and we will send that to you if need be. It's also on the Hype Vision website. So first thing when you've loaded up IMS 4200, first thing is to add your device. Very important. We can only do it with the correct device added. It's already added, so I will close that tab down. Next thing you have to remember is under module customization, you have to select the behavior analysis tab because that's where we check for the false alarm from the behavior an analytics. So we'll select that. Remote playback is very standard. It's, um, you know, I'm not going to go for that. It's exactly what you need it to be. Under behavior analysis, though, you'll see under your device, and, and currently we can only check for one device at a time, uh, one camera channel at a time. Again, I put a feature request in that we can check multiples. But if we say select that external camera that we look to set up, and we select uh, from the first, which is a week ago, um, we can narrow it down to a specific analytic or just choose all and it's important So if I don't tick false alarm and click search It will go away and search all of the alarms VCA alarms that have happened in the last seven days Probably shouldn't have done that But what you can do is click on an alarm and you can see validated with a human click play And that's the footage of said intrusion. There we go and again if I click on another one, these are all video footages, so click that, you'll get a better, it should, somebody should walk out into there now, there we go. You'll notice um, that the image is slightly um, degraded, for want of a better word, again I've already fed this back, I think because of the software is a little bit older and the technology's moved on to the B model that um, we need to do a little bit of work on the firmware or make a new 4200, but the principle is that it does work. Okay, so that will show you every single alarm, and I say there's uh, 3,500 3, alarms that have been validated there in the last week from that one camera, that's quite a lot, a lot of activity through here. Now, if I tick false alarm and click search, two. So you can see, click on that, there's a, a false, that's a false alarm, it's just a reflection off the stone. And again, false alarm on both of these. In fact, if you look at them long enough and play the video, you'll see our friend the seagull over there. So he probably initially triggered the al align, or perhaps it probably shouldn't have, but it's triggered and picked it up as a false alarm. And again, on that one there. Oh, there he is back again so just two false alarms from that camera in the last week and it's been rejected based on the fact there's not a human or a vehicle there and it has triggered somehow you can see the seagull has triggered it on that occasion if you uh, double click on that export picture export one save to the desktop yeah There we go. So that one was a seagull trigger. So I, based on that, I could probably adjust my sensitivity or my minimum and maximum object size. So the minimum and maximum object size wasn't set on this camera at the time. So that has been triggered it by our friendly seagull, but it has been rejected. Fantastic, that works. So if I pick another camera, the 232685. No, uh, let's go for... It works with thermals as well. I don't know, let's just pick two, two, six, three, five, search. And again, some more false alarms on there. You click on it and you can see their false alarms. If I went and download uh, Seagull again, see the Seagull, none of them have got the minimum and maximum object size, um, but the Seagulls, that's a rabbit that looks like. You click on that there. 
Look, it is a rabbit. We got friendly rabbits at DVS. So you can see that's the prime example of the technology at its best working, where it's eliminating those alarms that would have triggered through to an alarm receiving center normally, but these are now being filtered. Fantastic. Like I said, it's like to think it's 90% to 95% accurate. You will still get a few false alarms from it. Like anything, you'll never ever be able to get 100% accuracy. But if you reduce it up by 90 to 95%, that's a significant reduction. And I would be happy with that myself. Um, again, if you just pick another camera, so we'll go for the PTZ. I put it on the PTZ. Nothing found on that one. And then, probably find some more on these. I've got some of these with So again false alarms look. Again so it is really really uh, there's 105 alarms that have been filtered out with that. So again you can export these pictures um you know, for your record or whatever, or if you're getting things that should trigger it. If you're getting triggers that should trigger it, we need to look at the minimum, maximum sensitivity, thresholds, things like that. So it's a good indicator, a good tool for you to set up. Again, or if you're continually getting it, send those images to us. We can send them to R&D, get the firmware um, database modified, which will include that trigger, which we have done for other people in the past. So that's the basic overview of the behavior analysis and how you search for false alarms etc so what i will show you now quickly is i saved earlier some emails so every day i was getting these email reports i've now changed it to a week so if i open up one of these emails this is what it looks like so you'll get the email report say from the uh, recorder every day and it tells you what channels, how many alarms, and how many of them are false alarms. For instance, channel two is that 285, the one we set up externally. Um, alarms 313, false alarms two. Uh, not set up on that one. So channel, and you just go through them. So six alarms, 468, false alarms zero. And you can go all the way through them. So you should only get a few false alarms from there. False alarm 10. So that's that are quite a high false alarm rate. And again, every day I was getting these. So you could do this every week rather than every day. So you can compare that data. It's a very, very good tool. I say it's automatic when you do it via email. So hope, hopefully you found that of interest and uh, you really enjoyed that. Again, you can do it on the recorder. I'll grab the camera very quickly and show it to you on there. Other than that, see you in two ticks. Okay, so behind me on this big gigantic screen is the local GUI, GUI 4 of the false alarm NVR. So I'm going to zoom you in on that, take the mouse, show you very, very quickly how you can do it on the local GUI, and then we'll, uh, we'll end the video after that. Again, massive thanks for everyone who supports us. Uh, comments, like, share, subscribe, whatever. And don't forget, say thank you to Jake and Mike uh, for all their hard work behind it. If it wasn't for me, uh, I wouldn't be able to produce these videos. They give me a lot of support in the background. Of course, 90% of it is me, but I'm only joking. Um, if you do ever see him, uh, thanks to those both as well. And uh, so we'll take the mouse quickly. Let me just set you back up. Da -da -da. So you can see deep in mind, gotta be careful what I call it. Um, I have another word for it, which I'm not gonna tell you. So, up in the mouse on the left hand side, there are all the targets that have been acquired. So if I play that one back um, using the uh, VCA analytics, uh, the alarm goes off and links it on the left hand side. So you can clearly see the last few videos on the left hand side nice and easily. Um, the main thing I wanted to show you is under smart analysis, it gives you some stats under there. Again, we've got all of the standard human body and vehicle search stuff um, under the camera, oh sorry, under event and then smart event, we choose our external camera so it's a reference point to you. Under line crossing or intrusion, you can see enable intrusion detection human vehicle the setup is there is what we've done on the software minimum maximum all set through there but you can see there save vc picture which you don't get in the web browser it's ticked by default and the enable smart analysis so that's why you toggle it on and off like if we take this five light bullet camera you can see the save vc picture is on and then smart analysis is off so this uh vcr the nvr is doing some work in the background based on the trigger of that line from the camera 
Um, the other thing you really uh, want to be looking at within this recorder is under file management, event type, scroll down, you'll see there's one called false alarm. Okay, choose your uh, day and time, so we'll choose uh, speed up a bit, that camera there, let's go for up on the first, click OK, click search, it'll say no, so this is the gotcha, I've already asked for this to be changed, so you look at it, it looks like there's nothing there, actually there is, um, by default when we receive a false alarm, we receive the picture, like I said, we analyse the picture, and then if there's something in it, we, we process it, the linkage action further, so what you need to do is click on picture, and then you'll get those triggers. So there's our friendly seagull there, and there's the other trigger there from the seagull. So you can quickly see, there's only two there. Um, if I added another one in, make it interesting. Again, choose, uh, it's on picture by default, but choose uh, video by default, choose picture. If I circle through, you'll see the ones from there, look. Again, there's our seagull, pesky seagull. So you can see that's how easy it is to do it um, from the uh, local GUI as well. Um, hopefully that's all you need to see. Uh, thanks everyone for paying attention. Hope you're still awake and see you next week for the next video. Cheers all.